SRK Knowledge Foundation. Uh, we have one Gujarati writer, Zanit Chand Begani. Zanit Chand Begani is a great writer. And every Gujarati probably have known him, heard his work, and a phenomenal institution by himself. His son was Mahendra Meghani. Now Mahendra Bhai Meghani is a different kind of individuals. And he knew the importance of knowledge, the importance of book especially. So he started you know, one activity. He said, you call me, even if there are two individuals, I'm ready to travel from Bhavnagar to wherever in Gujarat. And condition is, I will travel on my own, no tickets, nothing you know you paid. Even if there are two individuals who are willing, I'll travel the distances. And till he died at the age of almost about 82, he relentlessly, he worked and he took this as his mission. And he would travel. If I call him, and we have called him in Surat many times, twice, and he came. And his task was only to read books. He said, my job is to ensure that I come to you, I come to your house, I be with you, you invite your friends and whosoever are ready. And I and a book And he would read out books for me. Just inculcating interest among the citizens I mean, society. And that movement, that work, you know, went on and on. And he was of the firm belief that people are reading it. And even if I, you know, like go to an individual having a meeting where there are only two individuals, okay, it's sufficient for me. It generates awareness. It generates awareness in the society. And then, and he compiled many volumes, which I'm sure Ravindra Bhai did have it. Ardi Sadini Vachan Yatra Karine, and he was a book, which you know, he really compiled. And he was generating books, Lukona Dhare Dhare Ponch. So it's the same tradition. You know, today you know, we are here and we are going to discuss a book. A book, I'm sure many few of us would have read it. One person definitely has read it, but another individuals, you know, we do not know. But this kind of experiments are very, very important where individual talks and he will talk about this book from his own perceptions. And we will take it based on our understanding. So each one, while you know he's talking his perceptions. We are taking that book depending on our own past experiences, depending on our knowledge and understanding about what is happening around us. And all of us will have a different meaning out of this. Tarit, I was asking my colleague up yesterday and I went through it. Okay. You know, what is Tarit? It's a, it's a very unique name. It's a different name. In Mane in a cover chair, what does it mean? But I, I was, you know, like Tarit is actually Tarit. Tarit. Uh, and Tarit is the savior, you know, basically. The leader. And I was, you know, I mean, really fascinated by the book, you know, he chose. I I I do not know. I did not ask him that why did he choose this book? But more importantly, the subject is very, very fascinating. Yesterday's Gujarat Mitra, I was reading it. In one of the pages, you know, there were one big news, another small news, and another again a big news on one page, and all were talking about suicide. You know, I mean, the one suicide, two suicide, on one page. So, you know, after reading it, you know, like nothing happened to I was so insensitive to that news. I'm talking about my own story. And 
today, you know, like we are talking about regarding the pain of others. And I was going through the history of the book, which is very, very evident that yes, you know, like what society needs is sensitivity, our understanding. We are, we are a product of the society. And then we have to give back. Arit, I'm sure, you know, he is influenced by the heritage, the legacy. Okay, it must be the only family, you know, like in the country. I don't think in any other family you will find, you know, four chartered accountants, you know, like coming one, second, third, and fourth generations. And that's that's unique. But more importantly, Jare in a in any LinkedIn account man in the tent. Okay, obviously any grandchild is influenced by grandfather and, and a grandfather uh, you know a great person but you know what he liked more about his grandfather is the legacy which I want to take it forward of my grandfather is you know in a, in a social sector but that's very very important that makes him a very very sensitive person because I have known him but I have never interacted very, very closely and intimately with him. But what I know of him through his father, okay, what he's doing, how he's progressing. But uh, we are fortunate that uh, Tarit is here and he's going to talk about a book which will open up altogether. I do not know. At the end of it, you know, we will know. We'll have some interaction with him. Tarit, let's, let's do that. Hi, everyone. Um, just a brief about me so by profession i'm a chartered accountant but the level of love i have for numbers and cash flows i also have for words and um, art so that is why i have come here to discuss uh, regarding the pain of others which is a very unique and fascinating book written by susan sontag so let's just have a brief introduction um so about a bit about susan so susan sontag was born in 1933 and she died in 2004. She wrote this essay um, in 2003, so one year before her death. So, and that uh, gives some contrast between me and her as well because she was 70 when she wrote this essay and I'm 23 when I'm discussing this. So you have to keep that dissonance in mind. And by, I think, occupation, she was an art critic, a critic, a writer, and a uh, an intellectual basically who lived in New York City and who uh, wrote uh, whose subjects of fascination were photography war and visual culture cultures and um, if you were to uh, talk about the book in particular so this is what the blurb of the book says what it seeks to discuss what is the purpose of images of pain and suffering can there be any real justification for the creation and consumption of images? So basically, जे आपने रोज न्यूज़ में जोटा हुई है शे के बच्ची जे आपने आपना इंस्टाग्राम के सोशल मीडिया पर लाइव फीड आउटी हुई है कि दुनिया ना डायरेक्ट डायरेक्ट कुना मा हंगर हुई, सफरिंग हुई, फैमाइन हुई, वॉर हुई आवे तो तो इब्रा इमेजेस आवे तो हाउ आर वी सपोज़ तू अंडरस्टैंड दोज इमेजेस how do we interpret, how do we make sense of them? How do we not feel desensitized by those images? Those are the questions that the book would like to essentially ex explore. Just on a big components breakdown, karu. So this is essentially an essay on war photography. So war and photography. Apre war ne jarak ek minute mana side par rakhiye, just photography pe focus kare. Ane photography nu interpretation bo interesting chhe kani apre photographs ne bo consciousity ko a vicharta nahi hota. We take photographs for granted as objective depictions of reality uh, without understanding the narrative power of them. But just to bring things down to a simpler level, oh, these are a few pictures of food. My father is an avid photographer of food. food na photos lene na phone ma store kare. I think upper left corner ma tamay dal bhat na normal lunch na photo dekha hai sir. There's nothing extraordinary about all of these. These are all homemade items, except for Singh Chana. But I can say upload pan nahi hai photos. I just click thay na store thay sir. So let's. I, I always wonder that when you click photographs every click on the phone, why do they must work, why do reserve so many gigabytes of storage for these photographs? 
सेकेंड ट्रैवल फोटोग्राफ्स आई थिंक लास्ट ट्रिप अमरी थी थी फैमिली वी क्लिक द फ्यू फोटोग्राफ्स आई आई जस्ट फाइंड इट इंटरेस्टिंग कि जयरेप ट्रावल फोटोग्राफ्स हो सीमिलर पोज हो एज अ फैमिली वे वी लुक एंड स्माइल टूवर्ड्स अ कैमरा मे बी बेकड्रॉप चेन्ज थे करें एंड वी हेव सो मेनी ऑफ दीज फोटोग्राफ्स अक्यूमुलेटेड विथ हस टूगेधर and of course travel waqt amuk apne thoda fancy photographs pan liye um of sceneries of um you know landscapes and all of those how do they make one feel so here i just wanted to ask a question to the audience as well ke when you see photographs posted by others about their lives kai pan travel um even food marriage for the, for instance so how do you feel when you see these uh, pictures of other people's life if someone would like to share acha lagta hai why, why do you feel good you relate and you connect and um do you sometimes wonder why someone is sharing an image of theirs online why uh, what satisfaction they get from sharing something online what do they want to convey about themselves when they share things online um and secondly again another question for the audience how do you uh, what do you do with your photographs how do you store them how do you archive them do you uh, do you store them meticulously tame social media pe upload karo cho tame photo albums ave ta digitally banavo cho tame physical photo albums banavo cho tame potani life ni kevi te ave ta document karo cho if someone would like to share again amuk moments ne tame kevi te capture karo cho what i do is i make different folders according to the occasion that i have clicked the photo ट्रावल ओरिएंटेड फोटोज आशन ओरिएंटेड फोटोज and it, it just simplifies the process quite a lot and it it takes away your role in selecting and picture picking photos and arranging them but um more pertinently here i want to contrast with some professional photographers that my friend malha nayak clicks if you look at these pictures so they look very different from the pictures i showed earlier those had a more scrappy feel here things are very polished and refined दरक फोटो में एक सर्टन फ्रेमिंग है सर्टन एंगल है सर्टन एडिटिंग है जो तेरे बहुत क्लियरली देखाय पी इवन आ बीजा बे फोटोज त्या है कि अँ एक डॉग आर है मरीन ड्राइव फूटपाथ पर सु 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 गए सेंटर ऑफ द फ्रेम है पास में बिल्डिंग्स है एंड इवन तो आ फोटोग्राफ्स कोई क्लियर मीनिंग नहीं तो एक स्टोरी है जे आ फोटोग्राफ्स के आ रेन्डम फोटोग्राफ्स नहीं राइट so this is what a professional uh, photographer basically does did you observe any other difference between the two between the earlier photographs that i showed je personal ata ne je professional photographers je type na pictures le sha in the uh, way they are taken difference in emotion difference in emotions e- emotions as in as in they were your family photos hmm. that showed your relation with your uh, parents the place you have gone that connection <coughs> connection for the travel hmm. and this other pictures were like they were professional they showed the frame they were describing the frame it was just a framework correct yeah yeah so, so emotions there is emotions are different yes. those are those are some family emotions and these are some professional and just frame emotions correct but in both cases the um events and the sceneries are candid but still with a professional photographs so we find them to be lacking emotion simply because they have a certain kind of polish to them but um we'll re- revert to this point later as it is a part of this book as well but um you know there is this university called new york universities U- new york university and any ek school che uh, stern school of business एनु एडमिशन प्रोसिजर बहुत यूनिक है सो तब ख्याल हे मोस्ट बिजनेस स्कूल्स दे आस्क यू टू राइट एन एसे अबाउट योर सेल्फ एंड टू डिस्क्राइब हू यू आर एंड दे ट्राई टू अंडरस्टेड योर मोटिवेशन लाइक दैट 
बट स्टर्न स्कूल ऑफ बिजनेस यू करे कि दे जस्ट आस्क के यू कंपाइल सिक्स फोटोग्राफ्स दैट टेल अस अबाउट यू एंड दैट इज हाउ वी विल अंडरस्टैंड हु यू आर वॉट यूर एस्पिरेशन आर एंड दो सिक्स फोटोग्राफ्स शुड हैव जस्ट वन कैप्शन ईच do them and that is basically how they admit students so this this is a great exercise for self reflection as well and i myself conducted this exercise uh, some time back so i'll show you five pictures sixth one is a bit vulnerable so i won't but five pictures i can show you so this is the theme that uh, is underlying all the pictures that i've chosen reconnecting j reconnecting has been an integral part of my journey thus far so in this album i'll show you pictures where i reconnected with a person an object a memory or a concept from a very different point of view so firstly this is a picture tame jo so ke this is not a picture itself this is a picture of a frame it is um, a picture i took long ago in dew uh, with my grandfather and uh, this picture i discovered after his demise and i got it framed and put on my desk and of course this is him teaching me by example that love with logic is love with health and then the second picture is this where i was reading a book called uh, upstream by mary oliver in tea gardens of uti learning to reconnect with mud leaves and grass and i am trying to convey ke kai rite both nature and reading are a very important part of my life this is uh, you know last year i spent a considerable time in mumbai so uh, when i moved there one fine night i had a rare sight of an empty subway tunnel in church gate station which is impossible to find but for some reason at that hour the entire station subway was empty and i was processing the paradox of experiencing solitude in a buzzing city like mumbai and of course hopper has uh, explored this theme in detail in some of his works but we'll not go there um then this was another picture i clicked after i moved back to surat from mumbai where i rediscovered the culture of my hometown um at an annual folk festival i think je pork ni season apni hoy che ema etle fafda che tame chatni wali chhas che pork che jalebi che and it just tells so much about the food of the place i belong to and also the culture of the place i belong to ke kai rite apni foodie mentality che kai rite apne ek fun loving um, you know uh, citizens uh, citizen reach che e badi vastu aa ma convey karvani try karu chu ane lastly this is uh, a picture i clicked very recently i went to this place called himalayan writing retreat near nainital and there there was a dog so i have always been a bit scared of dogs even though i have some compassion for them <laughs> and uh a po which is basically a mountain you no know, desi dog it helped me overcome my fear of dogs by being a good but rebellious girl and yeah so these were five pictures that i showed you so um what do you feel you know how do you feel after seeing these pictures did they like compared to the scrapbook i showed you do you feel that there was a narrative flowing through those pictures there was a theme that was there in the pictures and um you know if we talk about the narrative power of photographs tame which are sort of be level per narrative power work kare che photography ma ek vastu jare e photograph pic, uh, capture thaya che because when i capture a photograph i'm framing the photograph i'm deciding ke man a vastu capture kavi che and second thing is the meaning that those photographs get when i arrange them in certain order je post facto hoy che jare when i click that photograph e my meaning nahi hoto जैसे हूँ ये वस्तु प्रेजेंट करूँ छू तेरे मीनिंग इन्फ्यूज थे करेक्ट सो इफ आई वर टू आस्क दी ऑडियंस के तेरे पर आवा सिक्स पिक्चर्स चूज करवा तो तब के कम्पोज करते कि तब क्या पिक क्या पिक्चर्स हाईलाइट करके करते लाइक हाउ मेनी ऑफ देम वुड बी ट्रावेल हाउ मेनी ऑफ देम वुड बी फैमिली हाउ मेनी ऑफ देम वुड बी फूड हाउ मेनी ऑफ देम वुड बी समर एस्पेक्ट इफ समन वुड लाइक टू शेयर uh other things that i like i think we are able to connect right now but one more thing so here also one uh, one important aspect for consideration is that even the pictures that i've chosen i chose them with the tacit knowledge that you know someone might uh, see them so i am conscious of being observed in those pictures even though i have framed them like this maybe if i uh, were to compile this in a personal diary then the ordering or the selection would be slightly different that is of course a natural part of uh, you know um, edit of the editing and the curation process but moving on war 
let's combine the concept of war and specifically why does war photography exist which is the central question that this book tries to explore why do you think that war photography exists tumhe kem lage che ke apne war na photos apvana important che war journalism important che suffering na photos apvana important che apna newspapers ma why uh, war photography exists in the first place what is the purpose they try to serve what is the misery to the people okay focus kare cha anyone else sensitize them what is happening what kind of impact the impact that the negative impact i can say that war is not going uh, not helping any that's what i should go oh. to sympathize with the people yeah. to sympathize with the people yeah. horror and fear yeah horror horror, 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 horror and fear. fear so that we don't do this something like this you know i mean just and and you want to okay so let's uh, explore how uh, susan uh, how, how susan sontag has explored uh, has dealt with this question so first she makes a reference to virginia wolf jemni a conversation at a uh, prominent lawyer sata where they try to explore this question like the lawyer had asked virginia wolf how are we to prevent war and virginia wolf got offended by the proposition of we she said ke a we je che e apne examine karu pade ke we ma who who comprises this we when we talk about we to because her her take was that you know uh, you as a lawyer are not in the same we as i as a feminist especially in those times when that lawyer was male and as per virginia wolf's um, perception the very act of waging a war is masculine so that's why she felt that we do not belong to the same we even if we have the same objectives in mind and the second uh, the second part of this point is well how are we to prevent war i think by now even pacifists pacifists know for a fact pacifists are jilo ko ne peace jo gam to hoy e logo pe accept karyo che ke war prevent karvano impossible che world ma ke tame kai pan kari lo war thavani che at best uh, what we can do is we can address ke uh, war barbaric fashion ma nahi thai ema amuk je atrocities thati hoy che e moderation ma hoy કે ઇવન જે અમુક ફેક્ટર્સ હોય જે વોર તરફ લીડ કરતા હોય એ આપણે પ્રિવેન્ટ કરવાની ટ્રાય કરીએ બટ વોર એઝ અ કોન્સેપ્ટ ઇટ્સ ગોઈંગ ટુ સસ્ટેન ઇન હ્યુમેનિટી નો મેટર વોટ ઇઝ વોટ વિલ હેપન આઈ થિંક જે રિસન્ટ એક્ઝામ્પલ્સ છે જે ડેમોન્સ્ટ્રેટ દેટ કે ઓવર ધી લાસ્ટ સિક્સટી સેવન્ટી યર્સ આપણા આપણામાં એક એક્સેપ્ટન્સ આવી ગયું હતું કે હા વર્લ્ડ વોર ટુ પછી એક લાર્જ સ્કેલ બે સોવેરિન નેશન્સ વોર પણ નહીં જઈ શકે મે બી ગરેલા વોરફેર હોઈ શકે સિવિલ કોન્ફ્લિક્ટ હોઈ શકે બટ બે આખા નેશન્સ જે એકબીજા પર કોન્ફ્લિક્ટ ડિક્લેર કરે છે એ પોસિબિલિટી આપણે આપણને નહીં લાગી હતી બટ આઈ થિંક ધ લાસ્ટ ટુ યર્સ હેવ ચેન્જ દેટ રિયાલિટી એઝ વેલ ઇન ધ વર્લ્ડ બટ સો જસ્ટ ટુ સમરાઇઝ નો વી શુડ બી ટેકન ફોર ગ્રાન્ટેડ વેન ધ સબ્જેક્ટ ઇઝ લુકિંગ એટ અધર પીપલ્સ પેઇન whenever we are confronted with a we we must analyze ke ev ma kon kon include thai chhe ne kon kon exclude thai chhe and second point photographs of war and suffering can give rise to opposing uh, responses so here i would like to come back to the interaction we had earlier where i think unanimously people said that the purpose of war photography is to generate sympathy to create shock to create horror to say that war is bad and war should not be pursued peace should be the norm and war should be an aberration however tame when you look at the history of war photography to the uh, origin of war photography was to um, show war in a grand way to promote war in fact and tame aje pan tame amuk cases jo so je active wars ma dekhai chhe to ek photo hase so it uh, of a mutilated child that same photo is used by uh, pacifists to argue ke war nahi thavi je e same vastu chhe ne israeli militants use kare saying that this child is jewish etle palestine should come to an end and that same uh, photo is then used by palestinians saying that that child is a palestinian killed by the israeli army uh, uh, across the border so you can see that war can uh, that photographs of suffering can also be weaponized in multiple ways um that um 
that uh, that so you you shouldn't take for granted that you know photographs of war only generate sympathy and only argue against war they can also argue very proactively for war as well and um to a militant identity is everything i think as a third person observer it is very easy to uh, feel that war, uh, uh, photographs of suffering generate sympathy but as i mentioned when you are a militant and when you see these photographs then the identity that is communi- communicated by those photographs they uh, comprise everything i would still like to uh, read the excerpt of the book where she talks about these things so um, a bomb has torn open the side wolf rides of the house in one of the pictures to be sure a cityscape is not made of flesh still sheared of buildings are almost as eloquent as bodies in the street look the photographs say this is what it's like this is what war does and that that is what it does too war tears rents war rips open eviscerates war scorches war dismembers war ruins however but the case against war does not rely on information about who and when and where the arbitrariness of the relentless slaughter is evidence enough to those who are sure that right is on one side oppression and injustice on the other and the fighting must go on what matters is precisely who is killed and by whom to an israeli jew a photograph of a child torn apart in the attack on the baro pizzeria in downtown jerusalem is first of all a photograph of a jewish child killed by a palestinian suicide bomber to a palestinian a photograph of a child torn apart by a tank round in gaza is first of all a photograph of a palestinian child killed by israeli ordinance all photographs wait to be explained or falsified by the uh, captions so i think uh, this is something that clearly comes out ke you know when when it comes to war photography we need to go one level deeper than just say, just saying ke on a purpose say to um, sensitize people to the prevention of conflict and suffering so let's uh, look at the evolution of photography um, over time specifically in context of war to sauti pella je cameras outa tha to a tripod sat outa tha they were very difficult to carry around they were very difficult to operate as well to a times ma jare pan war na photographs leva tha the first war to be doc- to be documented like this was crimean war je 19th century ma thai thi to tyare akha je to most of the photographs would be post facto ki yudh pati go hoy na pachi photographs leva tha tha ane ema pan surprisingly so many photographs would be staged for dramatic effect ke a photographer ta poche pachi tya jaine par stones na move kare thodi destruction vadhare batava mate and he would try to stage it like that but all of them would be post facto second pachi second evolution aviu um, i think after world war 1 जयरे फोटोग्राफ ए कैमरा में ट्राइपोड निकली गया तो कैमराज बिकेम मोर पोर्टेबल इन नेचर वेर इन वी गॉट अ क्लोजर लुक टू वॉर हवे वर दैट वॉज स्टील सो के वाई दे वॉज स्टील स्कोप फॉर लॉट ऑफ मैनिपुलेशन बिकॉज इट वॉज स्टील नॉट इन रियल टाइम सो इवन थ्रू वर्ल्ड वॉर टू यूज लुक एट सो मेनी स्टेज फोटोग्राफ्स दैट हैव बिकम आइकॉनिक इमेजेस ओवर टाइम फॉर एक्जाम्पल एक पेलो रशियन फ्लैग मुकाटो हो आई थिंक एक स्क्वेर पर इन क्रेमलिन दैट हेज बिकम अ वेरी फेमस फोटोग्राफ्स इवन दो इवन दो दैट वॉज स्टेज आफ्टर द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट वॉज ओवर एंड ड्रामेटाइज थ्रू द थ्रू द प्रोसेस ऑफ एडिटिंग पची वियेटनाम वॉर जर आए तरह लाइव कवरेज बिकेम अ वेरी इम्पोर्टंट नॉम एंड ड्यू टू द प्रेजेंस ऑफ लाइव कवरेज शूँ थ जय फोटोग्राफर्स कस एक जता ए टाइम में जर्नलिस्ट और सोल्जर्स तो एम स्टेजिंग चांसीस बहुत रिड्यूस थे गए त्यार आपने मोस्टली ऑथेंटिक फोटोग्राफ्स मडवा मांड दिया फ्रॉम वॉर अपार्ट फ्रॉम वॉट एवर मैनिपुलेशन मे हेपन इन द कैप्शन्स एंड आई थिंक दिस थिंग कंटीन्यूड थ्रू मॉडर्न टाइम्स एज वेल विथ द लेटेस्ट रिवॉल्यूशन बीइंग ट्वेंटी फोर सेवन न्यूज जेम वी गेट लाइव विडियो फीड्स फ्रॉम द फ्रंट लाइन्स एज टू वॉट इज गोइंग ऑन हाउ थिंग्स आर हेपनिंग एंड um how like um, like ekdam real time matam constant feed matti hoy cha and this shows another iteration to photography and also another iteration to coverage of war by photojournalists what is important is that you know these uh, what is captured what is being captured of frozen is death and suffering for an eternity through these photographs and how they are capturing is 
અ યુનિટી ઓફ ટુ કોન્ટ્રાડિક્ટરી ફીચર્સ બે વસ્તુ કમ્બાઇન થાય છે એક છે કે વેન યુ લુક એટ અ ફોટોગ્રાફ તો ધેઝ અ ક્રીડન્સ ઓફ ઓબ્જેક્ટિવિટી ટુ ઇટ યુ નો દેટ યુ નો વેન યુ લુક એટ અ ફોટોગ્રાફ એઝ લોંગ એઝ યુ ડોન્ટ સસ્પેક્ટ કે ઇટ્સ ડોક્ટર યુ 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 કેન નોટ રિફ્યુટ ઇટ ધ વે યુ કેન રિફ્યુટ મે બી વર્ડ્સ ઓર શું કહેવાય કોઈનું અકાઉન્ટ એન્ડ સેકન્ડ કોન્ટ્રાડિક્ટરી થિંગ ઇઝ ધ ઇમ્પ્લિઝિટ પોઈન્ટ ઓફ વ્યૂ દેટ ઇઝ ધેર ઇન એની ફોટોગ્રાફ કે ઇન્ડિયન કોઈ ફોટોગ્રાફર જ કોઈ ફોટોને લે છે ઇવન ધો યુ કેન પ્રિઝ્યુમ ઓબ્જેક્ટિવિટી ફોર ફોર વોટ ઇઝ કન્ટેન ઇન ધ ફોટોગ્રાફ યુ હેવ ટુ બી અવેર દેટ ટુ ફોટોગ્રાફ ઇઝ ટુ ફ્રેમ એન્ડ ટુ ફ્રેમ ઇઝ ટુ એક્સક્લુડ ઇમેજીસ આર નોટ હન્ડ્રેડ પર્સન્ટ ટ્રાન્સપરન્ટ ડ્યુ ટુ ધ સેમ reason and you have to like appreciate that photography is not a science it is an art form and koi pan art form ho it is shaped by the intentions and the perspective of the artist who makes it i think one important theme that comes out uh, from our end is the idea of provocation and voyeurism to simplify this provocation itle kai rite um ફોટોગ્રાફ્સ આપણને પ્રવોક કરી શકે છે આપણામાં અમુક ભાવનાઓનું રાઇઝ આપી શકે છે બાય બીઇંગ અ સર્ટન વે ઇટ કેન મેન્યુપ્યુલેટ અવર ઇમોશન્સ અને વોયરિઝમ ઇઝ કે વી ગેટ ટુ સી ધોઝ ફોટોગ્રાફ્સ વિથ અ સર્ટન ડિસ્કનેક્ટ કે ઇવન વેન વી આર ઓબ્ઝર્વિંગ દેમ વી ડોન્ટ વી વી આર વોચિંગ દેમ ફ્રોમ અ સેફ સ્પેસ આપણે આપણા ઘરોમાં રહીને આપણે આપણા ફોન્સમાં જોઈને જોઈએ છીએ વી આર નોટ ડાયરેક્ટલી કનેક્ટેડ વિથ અ ફોટોગ્રાફ ઓફ અ સ્ટાર્વિંગ ચાઇલ્ડ ડિસ્કવર્ડ ઓન ધ કોર્સ ઓન ધ કોર્સ ઓફ સે ટર્કી કે પછી કોઈ આફ્રિકન કોન્ફ્લિક્ટનો ફોટો આવે તો વી આર નોટ ડાયરેક્ટલી કનેક્ટેડ વિથ દેમ એન્ડ વી કાન્ટ ઇવન ડુ એનીથિંગ અબાઉટ ધોઝ કોન્ફ્લિક્ટ વી જસ્ટ ઓબ્ઝર્વિંગ દેમ to some extent and i think this interesting parallel is drawn by susan sontag as well ke je tame gun ne fire karo ane ek photograph click karo they have a common word shoot and but no case ma you have to think from the perspective of who is being shot right uh, in a war bo- that the victim is shot both by a camera and a rifle and that is a very important thing and um, like you like એક વસ્તુ રેજ છે અને આઈ થિંક આઈ આઈ વુડ લાઈફ ટુ કમ બેક ટુ ધ બુક ફોર અ મોમેન્ટ શૂટિંગ અ સબ્જેક્ટ એન્ડ શૂટિંગ અ હ્યુમન બિંગ વોર મેકિંગ એન્ડ પિક્ચર ટેકિંગ આ કોંગ્રુઅન્ટ એક્ટિવિટીઝ ઇટ ઇઝ ધ સેમ ઇન્ટેલિજન્સ હુઝ વેપન્સ ઓફ એનાહેલેશન કેન લોકેટ ધ એનિમી ટુ ધ એક્ઝેક્ટ સેકન્ડ એન્ડ મીટર દેટ લેબર્સ ટુ પ્રિઝર્વ ધ ગ્રેટ હિસ્ટોરિકલ ઇવેન્ટ ઇન ફાઇન ડિટેલ હું તમારે એક આમાંથી ઇન્સ્ટન્સ કહું તો જે બોસ્નિયન વોર થઈ હતી નાઇન્ટીઝમાં એ ટાઈમે ખાસીવા છે ને સારા જેવોના જે રેસિડન્ટ્સ હતા સારા જેવો જે સ્થિતિમાં બહુ બોમ્બિંગ થયું હતું એના રેસિડન્ટ્સ આમ જર્નલિસ્ટને કહેતા હતા આવી રીતે શિલ્લાવતા હતા કે તમે લોકો આર યુ વેઇટિંગ કે કોઈ બોમ્બ આવીને ફૂટે એટલે તમે કોપ્સીસની ફોટો લઈ શકો દેટ ઇઝ ધ પેરલ દેટ ઇઝ દેટ ઇઝ ડ્રોન એન્ડ દેટ ઇઝ ધ વે ઇન વિચ ઇઝ જર્નલિસ્ટ વર્ક ડ્યુરિંગ વોર સો વી મસ્ટ અન્ડરસ્ટેન્ડ દેટ ફોટોગ્રાફી હેઝ an immense power to shape perceptions perceptions uh, that may be colonial that may be national and that may be about identity to am i example apu to colonial perceptions kai rite ke je jare pan jare pan colony colonies expand thati thi ane jare je war thati thi to e same atrocities je british atrocities india ma thati thi ke koi pan colony ma thati thi they would be shown back in their home country as signs of victory or signs of redemption and they would enforce an idea ke you know when you uh, when when atrocities are committed against uh, people who live in the colonies they are okay but when they are committed against people who live in the colonizer so they are unacceptable secondly uh, ek national perspe- uh, perception pan create thai jaye ave aaj aap aap lo આપણ આપણામાં કેટલા નેશન્સના રિલેવન્ટ અમુક પરસેપ્શન્સ છે જે ખાલી ફોટોગ્રાફ્સથી આવે છે ફોર એક્ઝામ્પલ તમે વેન યુ હિયર ધી વર્ડ સોમાલિયા તો તમારા માઇન્ડમાં એક સર્ટન ઇમેજ આવશે ઓર યુ હિયર ધી વર્ડ મે બી લાઈક નોર્થ કોરિયા તો તમારા માઇન્ડમાં બીજો પરસેપ્શન આવશે એન્ડ દેટ પરસેપ્શન ઇઝ સો સ્ટ્રોંગલી ઇન્ફ્લુન્સ બાય ફોટોગ્રાફ ઇનફેક્ટ વી આર ઓલ્સો વિક્ટિમ્સ ઓફ દેટ સર્ટન થિંગ કે જ્યારે વેસ્ટર્ન વર્લ્ડમાં વેન દે કમ અક્રોસ ધી વર્ડ ઇન્ડિયા તો દે think of a certain perception jema apne typecast kar le cha instead of uh, appreciating the diversity and this 
uh, always becomes the case when some western filmmaker makes a film about india ke ek bo unilateral perspective um uh, shape thai cha and um when we come back to the two functions of photograph now we understand ke photograph is not just there to document something but it also gives a medium of visual cues ये इंस्ट्रक्शन्स आपे कि ते लाइक आ वस्तु मैं डॉक्यूमेंट तो करी है यू आर सपोज टू फील लाइक दिस फॉर दिस थिंग तेरे आम एक इंटरेस्टिंग पर्स्पेक्टिव आप तो जस्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर टू ना एक वर्ष पहला कोई फ्रेंच फिल्म मेकर आखी एक मूवी बना थी जेमें बहु हॉरेन्डस फोटोज बताव्या था वॉर दैट 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 वॉज सपोज टू बी एंटी वॉर अनेना लास्ट सीन में लोग बतावे कि जे अमुक फ्रेंच सोल्जर्स हो ग्रेव में पाचा ऊबा थे इन अ डिस्फिगर्ड फॉर्म एंड दे वॉक टू आर्ग्यू के विथ विदाउट अ हेन्ड और विदाउट अ लेग एंड दी आर्ग्युमेंट दैट दी डिरेक्टर ट्राइज टू मेक इज के जो दिस इज वॉट वॉर्डर्स एंड दैट्स वाई इट शूड बी प्रिवेंटेड एट ऑल कॉस्ट एंड जस्ट वन इयर लेटर वर्ल्ड वॉर टू इरप्टेड डिस्पाइट यू नो आर्टिस्टिक जैसे कहवा सेंसिटिविटीज दैट एक्जिस्टेड एट द टाइम एंड दीज वर मीन्स टीम यू पी आ बढ़ी है अमुक नीचमा थी आ बढ़ू मेन स्ट्रीम नरेटिव पार्ट हो तो बेक देन बट मुविंग ऑन आई थिंक दे इज ऑल्सो समथिंग लाइट टच दैट वी नीड टू डू ऑन दी एस्थेटिक वेल्यू ऑफ फोटोग्राफ्स एज वेल एस्पेशली सफरिंग के जे एक सफरिंग पेन ने अपने एक एस्थेटिक वेल्यू डेजिग्नेट थे ए एक्जामीन करव जो है फॉर एक्जाम्पल दिस इज कोट ब्यूटी शेल बी कन्वर्जिव ऑल इट इट शेल नॉट बी एंड दिस टाइज बैक टू माई अर्लियर पॉइंट के फोटोग्राफर्स आर ऑलवेज लुकिंग टू फाइंड दी मैक्सिम पेन टू कैप्चर इन दर पर्टिक्युलर फ्रेम ऑफ फोटोग्राफ टू मेक इट द मोस्ट इम्पेक्टफुल कोई बहुत नॉर्मल फोटोग्राफ ले तो इट वोट इट वोट से क्या भाई मेक अ लॉट ऑफ इम्पैक्ट बट इफ इट इज of extreme excruciating pain then it will be talked about very often and i'm up on there's another thing that ties back to our point about a photograph being polished or rough so i think over time this uh, thing evolved ke uh, you know photographers should be authentic or we want them to be spies uh, sent into enemy territory and we want those accounts to be as authentic as possible and for chasing that authentic we want a lack of polish in those photographs कोई फोटोग्राफ बहुत पॉलिश्ड और रिफाइंड हो वी डाउट दी ऑथेंटिसिटी ऑफ दैट अने इफ इट इज वेरी क्रूड और यू नो विथ अ लॉट ऑफ इम्परफेक्शन एंड दैट इज परसिव एज कैंडिड अने हिस्टोरिकली एम ओपन थे कि खासा फोटोग्राफर्स जैसे स्टेज करता हो तो दे एन्श्योर के अमुक इम्परफेक्शन इन्क्लूड करें टू इंक्रीज द ऑथेंटिसिटी द परसिव ऑथेंटिसिटी ऑफ दोज फोटोग्राफ्स सो फोटोग्राफ्स आर ऑल्सो टोटेम्स देर इज नो सच थिंग एज कलेक्टिव मेमरी कारण के तब अगेन यू के नॉट टेक मेमरी ऑफ पीपल फॉर ग्रांटेड बट फोटोज एक्ट एज कलेक्टिव इंस्ट्रक्शन फॉर वॉट शूड बी फेल्ट एंड वॉट शूडन बी फेल्ट नरेटिव हेल्प अस अंडरस्टेंड बट फोटोग्राफ्स हॉन्ट अस वॉट इज द यूटिलिटी ऑफ नॉलेज ऑफ सफरिंग दिस इज एन ओपन क्वेश्चन दैट आई वॉन्ट टू आस्क ऑल ऑफ यू आई थिंक आफ्टर वी एक्सप्लोर so many things what do you think is the utility of knowing that there is suffering in the world what do we understand like up in newspaper ma apan watching when we look at these photographs when we look at so much information to what utility do we get what use are we supposed to make of that see the knowledge of understanding of suffering it acts as a deterrent it, it prevents you know like me doing or me you know making somebody punish or inflicting pain on him what's what But you are not the one who is inflicting pain. No, but you know, like as far as I am concerned, I will not do that. You will not do that. Okay. Human okay. race will not repeat the history. Sorry. Human race will not repeat the history. Human race will not repeat the history. Let's put it differently. Depending upon the perception, let's say, for example, if you are very, very more civilized person, you know, as Kamlesh Bhai I T pointed, if you are a civilized person, you try to ensure that this suffering doesn't. Occur or it's something that what he tried to say. But for example, if your perception is you know more cruelty, for example, that knowledge of suffering probably prompts me more or provoke it, provokes me, for example, to something that uh, increases the suffering, something like that. What I understand is that if I know the cause behind the suffering, then it gives me some insight that uh, I should avoid doing it. 
and you should avoid doing that. Yeah. But so, so again, that I do not suffer, or the society here does not suffer. Does not suffer because I am getting that input. Okay. What do you do when you come across the news that someone else is inflicting suffering on someone else? B is inflicting suffering on C. And you have no ways to stop that kind of suffering. Okay, koi B nation ma war challenge and you don't you don't have a say in that and then there's nothing you can do on an individual level. So Emma, what is the use of knowing that? That is the question. But um so the utility of suffering is not sympathy. It is instead to make us reflect that our privilege exists at the s on the same map as the suffering and compassion, um, as, as was rightly touched upon earlier, needs to be translated into action or else it withers. And I think in this book, two ideas that were proposed earlier by Susan Sontag were revisited by her. So I think 30, 40 years before she wrote this particular essay, she had written um, a collection of essays called On Photography, where she was examining a similar theme. And uh, she uh, came to a conclusion that images are desensitized. And public memory is media attention. However, um, when she sat down to write this particular essay, she, uh, she said that this is not something that happens un universally. Okay, even though as a third person observer, you are desensitized to the people who matter these photographs, those who have photographs are cultural connect. They can never be desensitized to, to those photographs. If you have a migrant in India, they have a partition, if they read the book Train to Pakistan, and image, if they see the photographs in that particular book, even though 70, 80 years have passed, they will still feel the same pain that was felt back then. So this is something that Susan Sontag herself revisited in this particular essay. And um, finally, I think she deals with the ethics of interpreting when we look at photographs. She said that it's okay for photographs to haunt us. It's okay to feel overwhelmed by photographs. That is not a bad thing. And that is not something we need to resolve. Memory embitters, but thinking empowers. So again, I want to uh, go back to the uh, book to her exact words to um, discuss this part a bit. So she says that um, there now exists a vast repository of images that make it harder to maintain a kind of moral defectiveness. Let the atrocious images haunt us, even if they are only tokens and cannot possibly encompass most of the reality. They still perform a vital function. The images say, this is what human beings are capable of doing, may volunteer to do, enthusiastically, self-righteously. Don't forget. Perhaps too much value is assigned to memory, and not enough to thinking. Remembering is an ethical act, has ethical value in and of itself. Memory is the only relation we can have with the dead. So the belief that remembering is an eth ethical act is deep into our natures as humans. Heartlessness and amnesia seem to go together, but history gives contradictory signa signals about the value of remembering. There is simply too much injustice in the world and too much remembering of ancient grievances and conflicts only causes more bitterness. To make peace is to forget. To reconcile, it is necessary that our memory be faulty and limited. So um, if the goal is to ha is having some space to in which to live one's own life, then it is desirable that the account of specific injustices dissolve into a more general understanding that human beings everywhere do terrible things to one another. So to just unpack this, Pachu, Ama, she says, ke, Ama, what is, it's not important, ke, of course, in the moment, in the here and now, in the political context, it's important that inflict kare sha. However, in a broader sense, the majority reflect karo, so the memory of this is not as important as the reflection of this. Human beings in corner of the world are capable of inflicting this kind of suffering. And you need to basically con uh, think of the photographs photographed as well when you look at these photos. How do they? How would they want us to view their photographs? 
and what is the thought that they go through when we see those photographs and when we make interpretations about them so there are two things first of all i think when, when photography is done there is a distinction made ki je loko important and famous hoy e loko na naam lakhela hoy photograph ni niche and these are they are reduced to nameless objects in these photographs which is an important distinction but more than that she uh, uh, focuses on the emotions of the soldiers themselves uh, where she writes these dead are supremely uninterested in the living in those who took their lives in witnesses and in us why should they seek our gaze what would they have to say to us we this we is everyone who has never experienced anything like what they went through don't understand we don't get it we truly can't imagine what it was like we can't imagine how dreadful how terrifying war is and how normal it becomes can't understand can't imagine that's what every soldier and every journalist and aid worker an independent observer who has put in time under fire and had the luck to elude the death uh, stubbornly feels and they are right basically our job is not to sympathize our job is not even to empathize because we are not capable of doing that we cannot even imagine ke kai type nu kai type ni situation ta hoy je which is known only by people who are caught in the middle of the conflict and whatever sympathy that we offer will always be perceived to be token by th- those who are going through this kind of suffering what instead is required is um, not just compassion but an inquiry into the rationalization of the suffering i know thoda heavy words up and, uh, and to just simplify a bit it basically needs us to question uh, very frequently ke why is this uh, suffering happening what is the reason behind it who is doing it what are the motivations behind this and why why do why do things escalate in a in a very uh, at a very large scale even though this seems to do to do abstract uh, in a very uh, in a grander scheme of things but as per sontag this is the role that the photographs play and this is the uh, thing that it demands of us not simply empathy and suffering and um, i think lastly i wanted to touch a bit upon the uh, context after her death um so she died in 2003 which is uh, which, which is uh, so i think th- this book was very heavily influenced by the coverage of 911 however she did not know the way in which photography would further evolve ja dar ek person na hath ma ek live camera hause ja news would not simply be something je koi photographer le che koi editor na through pass thai che na pachi disseminate thai che tamare pase newspapers na form ma but it would instead be something ke जे नॉर्मल सीविलियंस रेकॉर्ड करे अपलॉड करे मरे एम यू डोट इवन नो के आ वस्तु फेक चेक थी कि नहीं आ वस्तु डॉक्टर थी कि नहीं आ वस्तु हमें तो इवन एक्चुअल है कि ए आई जनरेटेड है दीज दीज क्वेश्चन विल बी इवन मोर कॉम्प्लिकेटेड गोइंग फॉरवर्ड बट आई थिंक वॉट शी ट्राइज टू से इज दैट वेन वी आर ड्राउंड बाय ट्वेंटी फोर सेवन of um suffering and war and conflict and all of those things what we should remember is to take a step back and just look at the grander scheme of things instead of being emotionally overwhelmed by the specifics of what we see and um that is basically it i personally wonder how she would feel about the modern world how she would feel about the kind of journalism we have today the kind of um like social media dissemination the kind of connectivity that we have and how that has further desensitized us to quite a lot of things but um yeah i think uh, that is something worth wondering about so i would also like to take any closing questions if you may have the one thing you know which in some of the pictures the moment you put narration underneath the photograph and a photograph as it is it changes my perception now let's say you know that uh, food which you mentioned and there was a narrative and once i read the narrative you know i have a limited perception about that particular picture so it restricts so you know i really wonder at times you know like whether we put you know like any narratives underneath the photograph or we just leave the photograph decked just as it is and let the uh, viewer decide or let you know like the perception decides
that is yeah that is very interesting i think kanke matlab i think would you be comfortable giving that power of interpretation to the viewer to i, I mean i i do not know but you know like the moment you put it you know like then i don't look at the picture i read that the words and that's it that is true that that is true it has uh, that particular power and i think amna ek uh, ek bo famous pop art punch hai jema a there's a photograph of a kettle and niche caption said this is not a kettle and uh, like what is it trying to implore to us which is something i wonder about but you are right ki when you put a caption to it then that caption limits your frame of thought to that particular photo uh, as to that particular photograph but it can also like um i i think it, it is possible to preserve some subtext even when you insert a caption if that caption is open ended enough i mean i'm a while you know like she wrote the book why did she write this and what what she wanted to achieve out of this any in emma make uh, study her or she the purpose of writing is did she really want us to feel suffering or why and you know, why did she like i don't i i personally don't think that she want she wanted an emotional outcome because uh, the way susan sontag is she is a very rational and logical writer and she just wanted she she just had a curiosity to rationally and clinically examine the purpose of war photography without attaching any ethical um purpose to it even though in book na ending mein lag to lage she apne ki maybe kai ethical uh, demands kare she reader pass pan chata i feel ki it's just something that she is trying to critically examine as a critic instead of um, you know going into the entire moral aspect of it and i see there was a gap of almost 20 years yes between on photography and this book and do you see uh, any change in in that journey of uh, two decades so i have personally not read on photography however um, i think je me uh, amuk aspects na je specifically contrast thai che e me vache book ma to she revised her view o, like amuk vastu on photography ma she say are universally applicable for example the desensitization that the image causes and ama she takes a more relative stance ke the way these photographs can make someone feel vary from person to person even though earlier she said that these photographs have a very uniform in- impact across people but i cannot um, you know uh, comprehensively draw a contrast between both of them ek vakat char panch varsh pehla ek photographer no world ma first number aayo dakshin africa na ek ek gaam ma koi balki hati ye bhook mara thi mrutyu pamane taiyari ma thi de vakate ene photo padelo ke ek em ક્યારે મરે અને ગીત બાજુમાં ઉભેલો હતું તો એને પણ ફોટોગ્રાફી ફર્સ્ટ નંબર આવ્યો બરાબર પણ પછી ત્રણ ત્રણ ચાર વર્ષ પછી આપણા જેવા કોઈ વ્યુઅર્સ હોય ને એને પોતાનો વ્યૂ આપ્યા કે એ ત્યાં બે ગીત હતા એક ગીત પહેલાંના મોતની રાહ જોતું હતું અને બીજો ગીત ફોટો પાડતું હતું તો પેલો ફોટોગ્રાફરે પછી આત્મહત્યા કરી કાઢી થોડો સમય એટલે આ રીતે વ્યુઅર્સના પણ અલગ અલગ નેરેશન હોઈ શકે છે આપણા હોય જ છે પોઈન્ટ but um possibly but maybe not because i think uh, with those particular habits i think there's already already awareness in the person that this thing is um uh, harmful to their health but still and even check once you start seeing those pictures over and over again you develop some kind of uh, you know used to nest to those pictures ek example apam na hu movies va go to you know we pili advertise our smoking wali mukesh wali to now whenever that advertise comes people just say kach kach ke chalo now let's move on and let's just start with the movie instead of you know um, observing so ek vastu pachi trite pan thi jati hoye if you uh, have a lot of exposure to it but uh, 
you start ignoring it to an extent but um, i don't know i don't know okay what kind of impact that that those kinds of pictures might have on the cigarette packet they may be they may be impactful ja awareness ni hoy but ja awareness hoy and to par ignore hata hoy to ema it's very difficult to quantify i think to my knowledge like you know people get used to it like it is there you just ignore it and then just move on same thing happened with uh, to my uh, like my opinion is the same thing happened with uh, uh, is a war going on between russia and ukraine the initially we all were affected like you know okay it's going on why is it happening and then after some time like, you know everybody moved on except certain people or political people or whatever that you know we don't now discuss anymore to what is going on over there or even press is not covering any coverage of that because over the period you will lose that uh, you know thing track so okay, it's going on somewhere it goes. and you said earlier you know when these are thai said they are like you know affecting that uh, eleven other affect the rest of the any other people so i feel that, like you know if something is going on थोड़ा वारे लांबा टाइम इन इन दीस वर्ल्ड नाउ लाइक यू नो द द वर्ल्ड वी आर लिविंग इन राइट नाउ पीपल डोंट गिव लाइक यू नो एनी इम्पोर्टेंस यू नो दे जस्ट मूव ऑन कि ओके चले से चलो तो पति या इंसेंसिबिलिटी या इट्स वेरी इंसेंसिबिलिटी ऑफ सोशल या इट इज देयर आई फील इट एंड मैंने पीछे भी ऊपर ना दी थी लाइक यू नो वी आर एज यू सेड के लाइक हमारा बजा पास से कैमरा चले एवरीबॉडी इज पुटिंग एवरीथिंग ऑन सोशल मीडिया whether it's these or that i feel ke like it's too much of knowledge is coming on on us which is not required to be very honest correct yeah it is like it's too much and like, like, yeah much and then and because of that too much uh, term mm. people are not uh, connecting with the actual uh, subject problems. or uh, problems you know that's the problem અને એના કારણે એ પણ થઈ ગયો છે કે ધેર ઇઝ સમથિંગ કોલ્ડ ડૂમ સ્પેન્ડિંગ ધેટ હેઝ બીકમ અ ફિનોમિનન જ્યાં યુ નો બીકોઝ ઓફ ધીઝ ઇન્ક્રીઝિંગ યુ નો ટ્રેજડીઝ ધેટ આર હેપનિંગ સે કોવિડ પછી આ વોર્સ ને બધું તો નાઉ યંગર જનરેશન જે મિલેનિયલ્સ ને બધા છે એસ્પેશલી ઇન ધ વેસ્ટ દે હેવ ઇન્ક્રીઝ ધ સ્પેન્ડિંગ ઓન લક્ઝરી એન્ડ કન્ઝ્યુમેબલ્સ એક્સપીરિયન્સીસ બીકોઝ દે આર લાઈક ચલો વર્લ્ડ ઇઝ વર્લ્ડ ઇઝ ગોઈંગ ટુ એન્ડ ઇન એની કેસ enjoy kar lo this is happening at your like i think the perception is life is meaningless that is coming let's party but um, th- this is unfortunate and it is like bo short term thinking che to make it vichar vajao to but yes i think attorney pan je wars chale che ema pan we need to just do a rational enquiry as to like chalo our wars escalate our point po pochi gayi che but kai rite you can't pinpoint a single event ke a event na karane a vastu trigger thai chhe you can't simplify it to that it's something je ek society ma change aavyo chhe globally and also within those countries je ma wars chali rahi chhe so we should reflect on whatever uh, these changes that are uh, impacting all of us around the world and we should see ke apde apdi society ma we don't contribute towards these lines of thinking that je eventually conflict must snowball thata jai cha e rite apne maybe consciousness maybe we can evolve as per sontag i think the tragedy is a more city for instance like uh, where civilians are i mean less put it a bush or fine spirit like, for example the bombardment and you know with the uh, united nations security council or we for example dominated by the so it is just with a i mean just the celebration from current topic for example like a review we get so the figure try or the gdp try without everything like russia side for that matter what to address something on that before you come to i think ek unique vastu hu observe karu chu ke aa badu ave social media thi apni news mare chhe na to what is happening which has probably never happened before is ke જે ન્યૂઝની ન્યૂઝના ઇમેજીસ અને વિડીયોઝ હોય છે તે શેરિંગ ધ સેમ સ્પેસ એઝ કુકિંગ વિડીયોઝ ધ શેરિંગ ધ સેમ સ્પેસ એઝ યુ નો કે કોઈના લાઈફસ્ટાઈલની રીલ કોઈના વેકેશનની રીલ કોઈના વેડિંગના ફોટોગ્રાફ્સ કોઈ બીજા કોઈ આવી રીતે છે ને સપોઝ ટેલર સ્વિફ્ટના કોન્સર્ટના વિડીયોઝ સો ઇટ્સ વેરી યુનિક 
કે આપણી ફીટ કોન્સ્ટન્ટલી આવી રીતે ઇમોશનલી આવી રીતે બેક એન્ડ ફોર્થ થયા કરે છે અને એમાં હાઉ ડુ વી પોઝ ઓન ઈચ પર્ટિક્યુલર ઇમેજ રેટ વી એન્કાઉન્ટર એન્ડ હાઉ ડુ વી પ્રોસેસ દેટ વેલ વેન ધી ફીટ ઇટ સેલ્ફ ઇઝ મુવિંગ ફોરવર્ડ એવરી ફાઈવ સેકન્ડ ઇઝ ઇમ્પોર્ટન્ટ ટુ થિંક અબાઉટ